I'd love it if you'd indulge this new subscriber by answering answering my hypothetical question about Ric Flair wrestling in the WWF during the Attitude Era. Back in 1998, Eric Bischoff and Flair had a falling out, which included lawsuits and countersuits that almost led to Flair leaving WCW and signing with WWF. Jim, first question. I believe you were still working in WWF at the time. How close did Flair come to making the jump? So that's the first part. Well, uh, let, me, let me answer the first part before folks get lost and, and lose their train of thought. It was so close, and nobody knows this, and I've never told this story before. There was a WWF pay-per-view in Greensboro, North Carolina. in 19, I believe it was 1998, but uh, all the, the factoid folks check me on that. But, you know, I'm not lying on purpose. Flair was circling the Greensboro Coliseum on the phone with me. And I could, Vince couldn't talk to him because of the contract situation, but I could talk to him because we were friends. But the plan was for, let me say this right. The plan was for Reed Flair because Reed at the time was, a young man who was competing in amateur wrestling and what we wanted to put together and what I had put together on the phone with Rick was for Rick and Reed to be sitting in the front row at the WWF pay-per-view in Greensboro and for us to recognize the tremendous wrestler named Flair that had recently won championships and go to Reed with Rick sitting next to him in the front row of the WWF pay-per-view. And Rick was actually circling the goddamn Greensboro Coliseum. And I was on the phone with Rick because Vince couldn't be because of the goddamn uh, contract tampering and it's, and etc. And Rick was on the phone with his attorney. And at the last second, we decided that it couldn't happen. And Rick went back to Charlotte but it was that fucking close. And it was because Rick despised Eric Bischoff, who is a fucking piece of shit and who had treated him like a piece of shit. And he wanted to make a statement. And he and I had come up with this idea and it almost happened, but it didn't. And I wish it had of, but that's how close it fucking came. And nobody's ever heard that story because, <laughs> to be honest, um, I would have told it, but nobody's ever asked the question before. But well, that's how close it fucking was, folks. Let's get to the second part of his question. Secondly, had Flair made the jump to WWF, do you think he could have had a run as a top heel against Stone Cold Steve Austin, perhaps as part of Vince McMahon's corporation? How do you think their styles would have meshed? Would Vince have been believed in, uh, would have he believed in Flair enough to give him the top spot? As much as Bischoff was trying to bury him, Flair was still a gigantic ratings draw for WCW at the time, and obviously one of the most talented guys in the business. Having said that, there seemed to have been a bias against the older wrestlers in WWF WWF at the time. Thanks in advance for answering my questions. I've always wondered about the dream matchups that never took place when Flair decided to stay in WCW. Keep up the great work. P.S. Fuck all Republicans from Andrew in St. Thomas, Ontario, Canada. I think, uh, and thank you, by the way, Canada. Uh, you know, I would have never said years ago that every every other country in the world would have, have had more sane politicians than we do, but it's that's unfortunately the case now, so that's why I say it. Um... Ric Flair would, if, if he had come to the WWF in 1998, 99, yes, he would have worked with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin would have relished the opportunity to work with him. The matches would have been great because Austin would have been into it. Regardless of what Vince, uh, input Vince had to say about it, I think he would have gotten over because everybody would have been creaming in their jeans to work with Ric Flair at that point, especially Steve Austin. And this is, and I'd say this to Steve to his face. It's not like I'm, you know, saying something that, that Steve wouldn't agree with. Steve would have loved to have worked with Ric Flair at that point in time. Um, and it was, like I said, that close to fucking happening. And it just didn't because of the advice of Rick's attorney based on, 
okay, you know, well, we can, you know, get more money out of this guy and blah, 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 blah. But, um, but I think Vince would have been all over it. He seemed receptive at the time, uh, not even receptive, but anxious. And uh, I think it, it probably, uh, Rick probably would have prospered better in hindsight by making that move than he did by, you know, working for that lame duck company for the next two years until Bischoff and Russo and the rest of the assholes who didn't have a goddamn clue and couldn't grab their ass with both hands put the fucking company under and out of business and devalued everybody in the wrestling business and started the downfall that continues today. So the answer is, would, would, no, he wouldn't have been jobbed out. No, he wouldn't have been made to look like a fool. And yes, everybody uh, uh, in any top spot on the roster, Undertaker, Austin, Rock, would have relished the opportunity to work at that point in time with Ric Flair. So I wish it had, ha it had happened. It didn't. And, you know, uh, and then Russo and Bischoff and the rest of Turner Broadcasting put WCW out of business and made it a moot point. But... For a for a minute there, because I was looking like a genius at that point in time, because I almost delivered Rick. I delivered Rick Flair to the goddamn Greensboro Coliseum parking lot, but I couldn't deliver him to the fucking building. So I almost looked like a genius, and it would have been good, but it it didn't work out. Our next question. And is by the way, oh. if, if 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 this is the first time Eric Bischoff, who doesn't listen to our program, I'm sure, is ever hearing this, yeah, Eric, Rick was in the fucking parking lot with his son. He was going to be in the front row of the goddamn pay per view. We were going to fuck you, you fucking prick. And because of the advice of Rick's lawyer, it didn't happen. And I still wish it had. And by the way, Eric Bischoff. Fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. You never knew shit about the wrestling business, and you never will because you're a fucking piece of shit. But otherwise, what's the next question?